Hey guys, what's up? Green Machine Sam back with another video. And today we have our Tennessee Titans franchise offseason video. Of course, after the previous season going 7, 9, and 1, finishing the bottom of the division, it kind of sucks. You know, we had a lot of close games. We had four overtime games that we all lost. And then, of course, no, we had three overtime games that we lost, one game where we did end up tying. And then, of course, we had a couple late games where just teams were just better than us in the late game situations. We do have some upgrades to take care of. P Peter Skaronsky getting an upgrade, as well as many, many others. Monty Hooker, Aziz Alshair, all that fun stuff. It's it's crazy just how much our situation could have flipped, you know. A couple years ago, it was the Vikings, you know, they were, what was it, 11-0? in one score games i think we can we only had like five or so games that were not one score or it was like hey we out of all of our losses only two of them weren't one score games so you figure you know seven different games that we could have possibly taken there is absolutely insane going into the off season uh a lot of big names have stepped up this year Traylon burks really showed his value imani hooker really showed his value as well Will Levis is definitely a question mark going into next year. Um, we're going to run it back with him and Lance probably at minimum. Uh, just give them one more opportunity. I think next year will really be the determining factor of whether or not we do continue to go their direction. I really do like Will Levis. It's just his re release is so weird in game that it kind of just fucks with me a little bit. Jason Pennock, we have moved down to corner because he did fit that scheme a little bit better. He's going to be playing in the slot for us a lot anyway. So yeah, we have a lot of stuff to cover. We have free agency, we have the draft, we have everything to take care of over the next several weeks. Uh, we got the re-sign period, all that fun stuff. So you guys are going to see it all here in today's video, of course. Like I said, a ton, a ton of work to do. We have a lot of free agents to take care of, all that fun stuff. It's going to be fun. It really is. So we are going to look at the Pro Bowl roster just to see if anybody did end up making the team. Um, we didn't get a quarterback. I figured we weren't going to get a quarterback. Uh... So, yeah, that's tough, whatever. Josh Jacobs, Damian Pierce, Jonathan Taylor at running back, no fullback for us. Uh, Traylon Burks does get wide receiver six, though, so he does end up going to the Pro Bowl. Tyron Smith ends up getting left tackle. I think that's more of his overall showing than anything else, I would assume. Didn't get any defensive players at all, so that kind of does suck. Going to check out yearly awards now, as well as season stats here at the end of the season. Pat Mahomes wins MVP, no Tennessee Titans in there. Definitely not in Coach of the Year discussions. Offense Player of the Year, we did get Spears at 10, so at least we did have a player that was worth recognizing. Uh, in real life, it would go to Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans, not Patrick Mahomes. You can't win Offense Player and MVP. Jeffrey Simmons wins. Defense uh, is number 10. He doesn't win it. Sorry. Chris Osgood, the Jaguars, receiver at 3. Franklin Amos at 8, so he did show up enough. Just to get recognized at least. Quentin Ayers at number three for us for defense rookie of the year. That's good. He he definitely played well. He just didn't play well enough. Keen Evans in there at middle linebacker. And we didn't win any of the positional battles. Uh yeah, and then something you'll see, especially once we go over the stats, is Josh Wiley was probably a top five tight end last year, just in in terms of stats, and he didn't even start three games. So that's pretty impressive, all things concluded. There was a couple guys where it was like, eh, is he actually better? You know, because of stats, you know, this guy had more catches and more touchdowns, but Josh Wiley had way more yards and had a better average and had more yak and stuff. You know, so there's all, all different types of things. Will Levis, 3,100 yards, 19 touchdowns, 13 picks, 59 completion percentage. Played well in the later half of the season, uh, only six picks in the, uh, only six touchdowns in the later half of the season. Trey Lance, 8 for 5. That one game against the Colts just really fucked him uh, pretty well there. And then Malik Willis coming in for that last game. 19 for 26, one touchdown, 193 yards through the air, 73% completion. He played phenomenally well for what he was given in terms of just that little bit of time. Tajay Spears, 243 carries, 1,224 yards, 5.0 yards a carry, 13 touchdowns. He ranked higher in his yards than his attempts so that is good news he was playing at a better pace than a lot of other running backs you will see it here in just a second yeah he was 18th in rushing yards 12th in rushing touchdowns and 23rd in carries so that is always good news to see that and uh Traylon Burks played pretty well too Hassan Haskins 58 carries 325 yards 
5.6 yards a carry, six touchdowns. He played phenomenally well when he was in and when we required him to. He's going to continue to be that backup. I think he earned that much, to say the least, especially with the Dolphins game in year one. And he stepped up when needed when we needed him in year two. Four receivers, well, four different players with 60-plus catches. Traylon Burks, Josh Wiley, Bo Milton, and Tajay Spears, all with 60 catches. All with varying yards, though. Uh, Tajay Spears is going to get the least amount of those yards because he is catching them out of the backfield. He has a lot of those check down routes. Nine touchdowns for Traylon Burks, 1,155 yards. 898 yards for Josh Wiley, four touchdowns. Bo Melton, 864 yards, six touchdowns on the year for him. They both played phenomenally well. Uh, Bo Melton kind of fell off near the end. He was at, I think, 816 with two games left in this season. And we only got him another, you know, 40-ish yards. So that's not great. Josh Wiley got about 140 in the last two. Isaiah Hodgins definitely played well, but with just him already being 26, it doesn't make sense to continue to go towards him. 17 for 248. Franklin Amos, 19 for 193. Of course, one guy that's not going to show up, of course, is the is DeAndre Hopkins. If I, if he did play it all this season on our team. I think he played the first couple games, to be fair. Shair with 111 tackles. Caleb Farley with 86. Von Florence with 83. Hooker and Evans with 75. The reason why Evans isn't higher isn't because he was playing bad. It's that uh, Jack Gibbons got a lot of time, especially early throughout the season. And as the season wore on, it was kind of apparent that Keen Evans was just a better fit. Speed kills in Madden. And with, of course, Jack Gibbons only having 78 speed, it's kind of hard to use him uh, in, just in that regard as well. Uh, sacks. Jeffrey Simmons with 10, so he had a pretty good year. Yutir Grossmanos with the limited time came in and had five. Now, of course, a couple of those were user sacks, so, you know, you do have to take that with a grain of salt. But Harold Landry, he apparently played in all 17 games and just didn't show out. Um, I know he started at least 10 games, uh, so five sacks for him on the year, just not very good. Half a sack a game. He's definitely gone. That's as simple as that. Shair with three, Campbell with three, Osai with two, uh, Dinico Autry with two, one and a half for Clint Furl, one for each of the other two middle linebackers. Another guy, Calais Campbell, who had a really hot start and then just kind of fell off. Joseph Asai, same deal, had a really hot start, fell off. So we had to move away from them later in the season. They just weren't getting pressures as much as I would have liked. Now it's been picks to go around this year. Four picks for three different guys, Ayers, McCreary, Hooker, and then multiple other guys get two or a couple in there. Mark Vickers got two in one game, which was pretty impressive on Florence. I thought he had three. He did not. Both the linebackers had two, and of course, Caleb Farley had three. Jeffrey Simmons even in there with one pick. I do remember that pick pretty vividly. Uh, so, And then we had a couple touchdowns. Roger McCreary with two. Uh, Aziz with one. Osai with one. Farley, I think it said, with one. So, uh, I think Harold Landry's and both Osai and Harold Landry's were on sack force fumbles. So... Good by them. Uh, like uh, something I was gonna say is McCreary and Shair had incredible first like four weeks of the season and then kind of fell off, um, which is kind of crazy. Trey Wolf played really well. The only problem is uh, Tucker just played better than him. He was very close to winning Kicker of the Year. I wish he would have. He could have potentially gotten a Dev trait. We could be up even more. Season 24, 24 recap twenty one twenty. Your Super Bowl champs are the Dallas Cowboys. Michael Parsons wins MVP of the Super Bowl. We're going to go ahead and take a look at retirements as well, just to see if any of our guys did end up retiring. Some guys that maybe we wanted to bring back. Yeah, Danica, Autry, Pat, Pete, and Clayus Campbell all retire, as well as Harrison Smith and others. Not really going to care about anybody else on the other teams. Looking at now, draft three, Tavares Goody uh, is the top edge. I really do like him. But I just don't know if we're going to be able to go up to number one overall. I understand it's mock draft three, so a lot of stuff can change. Derek Wesley is probably a top three edge in the class. I particularly like him. And at 21 years old, standing at six foot four, 253. And he's going to be that outside backer, so he's going to fit our scheme just a little bit better. I think he is definitely a good fit if we do decide to take him at number 11. Traylon Burks does have his fifth year option, but I, even though he broke out, he had an incredible year, you know, 61 catches, or was it 60? Uh, whatever, 60 catches, 1,155 yards, nine touchdowns. It just doesn't make sense to pay him 33000000 million. I'd rather pay him just next year. Reed Blankenship, I'd love to bring back, but I just can't pay you starter money at this point. He's going to want starter money. He should attract plenty of uh contract offers from free agency. The rest of the guys just not really interested in, and especially considering the fact that I can get them for a lot cheaper in the offseason. 127 mil, though, to spend. We do have plenty of money to go around. We still have a pl plenty of money to really do whatever the fuck we want with. 
I would love to bring, like I said, some of these guys back with, with resign interest. It's not like free agency where you can negotiate. It's either they agree or they don't. Um, Kevin Givens, I do try to give a contract here. Uh, $4 million over one year. He just doesn't want it. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about it all that much. DJ Jones, another guy that I'd like to bring back. He played well for us in the run stopping downs. Another guy that I would be willing to offer $4 million over one year. He doesn't want it either. In the re-sign period, I don't look towards re-signing a lot of these guys. Especially anybody over the age of like 27, 28. It seems like those guys don't get a whole ton of, you know, offers in Madden. Madden doesn't do a good job at signing players in free agency. Yeah. He would take 22 total over three years instead of uh, going into his negotiations next year. Or I could have paid him 33 for one. It, it just doesn't, it just didn't make sense to give him his option. Uh, as much as I've liked his improvement over the last two seasons, he, he's just not worth 33 million. He just isn't, you know, uh, unfortunately. So Tyron Smith, though, I do want to bring back. I think he, I, I know I was talking at the end of the season that I shouldn't bring him back. He didn't play well enough, but I think as a tackle, that's very, very good right now. Um, Maybe I was misremembering. I know we got the ball off a couple times, so we definitely did but almost give up sacks, but we got the ball off quick enough. He doesn't want to resign, but we are going to franchise tag him. It just makes the most sense right now. Got to use the franchise tag anyway, 28 over 1. and actually saves us $0.3 million to save as well, which is very nice. So if Tyron Smith is now going to be back, not going to bring anybody else back in the resign period. So in stage one, uh, we are targeting a bunch of different guys. I did up it to 10. I figured if I have the money to go spend, I shouldn't be limited to how many guys I can go out and sign right away. You know, teams don't wait around for for other teams to sign players either. I figure I shouldn't have to either. Terrell Dotson, BJ Hill, David Andrews, Tony Adams, Josh Oliver, Ryan Stonehouse, and others. Um, Charles Menahue, DJ, Dermonte Jones, uh, Osa, Adigu. Yeah, I, of course I can't say his name now that I'm fucking recording. But Terrell Dotson, all different guys that I want to bring in. Uh, so let's go ahead and get things underway. In round two, well, eval of period two, we are going after virtually the same group of guys. Just a couple different changes here and there. Um, Khalil Mack in here as well. Ryan Stonehouse, Dermonte Jones, Charles Menahue, Taylor Lewan, Darrington Evans, Taysom Hill, and Blaine Gabbert. Some of these guys are in here for varying different reasons. Taysom Hill is a very good option at fullback as well. Uh, especially if we do decide to move off a of chick at fullback and just, you know, filling spots here and there. Khalil Mack going to be a good edge rusher to bring in as well. Reed Blankenship, we're going to try to bring back as well in eval period three. Of course, there's a ton still going on. Uh, Joseph Asai potentially being brought back as well. Blaine Gabbert going to be brought in for that mentor tag, all that fun stuff. And, you know, if you're not seeing a guy, it's because we signed him. Logan Thomas in here as well for his mentor tag for those tight ends going into eval into stage two. You know, some of these guys are going to come in, fill a role, you know, whether it's the mentor tag, whether it's being a backup, whether it's being, you know, a role player, starter, quality player, you know, all these different things, filling a role, filling a need that I need on the team. I'm not going after anybody that I don't need. I'm not going to go after people that I know I'm not going to keep or use. If I go after somebody, it's for a reason. Marquise Goodwin, another guy here for his mentor tag. Some of these guys, like I said, I'm going to give them shit offers. I'm not going to give them all the money in the world. It just doesn't make sense to do that. My signings so far have looked pretty good. We got a lot of the guys that I wanted. There was one guy I was going to go after, and I decided not to because I need more role guys than anything, and it was JOK. I was going to pair him with Aziz, but I figured Terrell Dotson and Keen Evans are probably a better option at this current state. And then, like you've seen, some of these guys have literally one bar of top offers as red. And that's fine. A guy like Elijah Moore, where I don't care if he really signs, I'm just trying to go after him because if he does sign, that's a quality upgrade for us. Um, it's fine. You know, I'm not going to sit here and offer the dude fucking 10 million a year because he's an 80 and a 25 overall. If nobody's going after you and you're not wanting to sign, that's a you problem. Tutu Atwell, a guy that has a little bit more interest in us, so he's going to be willing to come here a little bit easier. The only... The same age, has more speed than Elijah Moore, and is about an inch taller as well. So, you know, he's going to fit a little bit better. As well as him wanting to be here is always good. Signing so far, Ryan Stonehouse, Khalil Mack, uh, Osa Odegezuit. I fucking can't say his name right now. I literally could say his name when I was recording these clips, and now I can't say it. What the fuck? 
Uh, Elijah Moore, we're still going after Reed Blankenship. Nobody was going after him. And a lot of these guys you're going to see didn't have value, didn't have offers on the table at all. I'm not going after guys that have a whole ton of offers. I'm not going to compete with somebody to sign some of these guys. Some of these guys are low overall. It's high age, all di- all different type of stuff. I'm going after these guys because I need them to fill a role. I need them to fill a need currently in this moment. My signings going into eval period two of stage three go as following. As you guys are seeing on the screen, we have done a very good job this offseason. Gary and I thought we did a very good job last season. We saw how the team turned out last season. So, of course, there is that little bit of speculation that you can definitely look here and say, like, hey, maybe you didn't do as good of a job as you thought. So, in the free agency recap, we did get Stonehouse, Khalil Mack. Uh, Stonehouse was one of the only guys that got a long-term deal. A lot of these guys getting one-year deals. Reed Blankenship, I gave 12 over 3. Uh, we can get out from underneath that contract if we absolutely need to. Another guy like Tutu Atwell, I gave a long-term deal, but I can get out from Kent, uh, Kendrick Green, Tony Adams, all these different guys that are maybe a little bit younger and I'm going to give a couple years to. I did give myself an out, so there is that. Like a guy like Joseph Asai, I gave him th- seven years, $21 million. He's going to be getting paid three, you know, $3 million a year, but I can easily get out from underneath that. Granted, he is a good special teamer. He has shown up in the edge rushing game. He's definitely performed well for us over the time that we have had him. Other guys, I gave seven-year deals because, well, let's put it out there. I can get out from underneath their contracts if absolutely needed. I can release those guys for no cap hit against me. You know, it, that is one thing I will say. People do not understand that. Like, if you, ha- if you have a little extra money and if you want, hey, I want this guy for four years. I just don't know if he's going to be worth it. And if he's a low enough overall in free agency, you can probably go out and sign him for a very cheap, for an expensive deal long term. But if you don't give him any signing bonus, you can get out from underneath that contract perfectly free. Here are some of the guys that we are looking at: Tyler Linton, Tremaine Morton, D. McMillan, Clark Bradfield, Zach Goodrich. Some positions I didn't even look at: quarterback, running back. I didn't even look at tight end. I didn't even look at. Um, I don't think I looked at corner all that much. I looked at safety a little bit, but. A lot of the stuff is going to be edge rushers, are going to be edge rushers, D linemen, O linemen, we're wide receivers, you know, all different things that can help us right now. Of course, I don't have this set up exactly how I would take the players. And looking at Mac draw, Draft 5, we're going to have to make some moves if we do want a guy that we want. Tar- uh, Tavares Goody, I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he is definitely a guy that I really want, but being the top edge, being at number one, I can't quite get up that far. D McMillan is guard. He looks like the best guard in the class. Can't quite get up to number five, but Derek Wesley has moved up bo- the board to number seven away from our number 12 spot. I really wish I could have went up and got him. I'm going to try to go up and get him. Eric Sinclair is another decent edge rusher, but with him being older, I would like to go towards Derek Wesley if we can get up to that number seven spot. Take Derek Wesley. So here in the draft at pick number one, round number one, the Panthers end up selecting Goody out of Penn State, edge rusher. Andrew Henson out of South Carolina goes to the Broncos. Uh, Justin Shaw goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Robert Allen out of Iowa State goes to the Minnesota Vikings. It looks like they're going to replace Harrison Smith finally. D. McMillan goes to the Patriots. They're going to shore up that off the line just a little bit more. Kevin Bolden out of Georgia Tech goes to the Chargers. I didn't particularly like Kevin Bolden, so that's why I didn't have him highly ranked as an edge rusher. I thought Sinclair and Wesley were both better than him. We are going to be moving up to number seven, though. That is why I stopped at the Jets. Harold Landry, our first this year in a 2026-7, go to the Jets for their 2025 first, uh, 2027 fourth, and a 2026 fifth. Harold Landry... They had interest in him as an edge rusher. I'm going to trade him to the Jets. He's going to go there, play. I'm going to go ahead and take Derek Wesley then. It just makes the most sense for us. Harold Landry off the team finally. Derek Wesley here at pick number seven in the first round. Six foot four, 253. Edge rusher out of Texas A&M, 21 years old. 86 speed, 86 jumping, 80 strength, 80 acceleration, 79 agility, and 70 change of direction. He looks fucking phenomenal. Uh... Hidden dev trade as well. He should come in and play right away. Here in the second round at pick 10, we're taking Keenan McT- McIntyre. Uh, he looks incredible. Projected round two or three. He has a first through second round grade. He is 21, six foot three, 254 out of Penn State. Speed rusher, 79 speed, 78 strengths, 86 jumping, 91 acceleration. He should come in and basically start right away and get us to that decent look. I did have to trade a lot to go up into the second round. I wanted back-to-back picks here. 
almost, well, virtually back-to-back picks. I think one of our division rivals was right behind us or something. So I didn't want to trade up with them. So we're giving up two six, two sevens, a second, and a three to move up into the second round. We're taking Max Thurmond here at pick 12 in the second round. We are taking, yeah, a guard. I know our offensive line is going to be deep, but 23 out of Auburn, 6'5", 331. This is a position where I don't mind taking an older guy. 92 strength, 71 speed, 78 acceleration. He is a freak athletically. He's big enough where we could slide him out to tackle. He is fast enough, long enough. He could definitely play tackle if we need to. Tyler Linton. This is the reason why I'm taking this dude. Elite, great, elite, great, great. He has 94 fucking speed, 90 jumping, 96 change of direction, 92 agility, 98 acceleration. He is going to be the playmaker we need. We saw the speed from Bo Melton and how that was used last year. He should work even better. Titus Howard, another guy that had insane fucking value. A's across the board and B's in his non-fucking archetype is incredible. Six foot five pass protector out of North Carolina, 83 strength, 66 speed, 73 jumping, 70 agility, and 81 acceleration. Hidden dev trait as well. We're picking up a fourth from the Green Bay Packers for trading out of the fifth round. I just don't need it. It's just as simple as that. I didn't have a whole ton of guys left on my board, and the guys that I did have were already at positions that I had already taken. And the last guy I really wanted to take was Emmanuel Brooks. He had that weird little edge rusher um, stasher at 5'11", 240, 81 speed, 78 jumping, 85 acceleration, uh, agility, 87 acceleration, 68 strength, 5'11", 240, hidden dev trait. He could be a good project down the road. Didn't take a whole ton of picks this year, but we did take value all across the board. Like I said... O-linemen, once you get the hang of it, are pretty easy to scout. Edge rushers are kind of easy to scout. And wide receivers, if you're looking for a certain type of receiver, they're pretty easy to find. If you're looking for the freaky athletic dudes, they're very easy to find once you know you're, what you're looking for. So a lot of these positions are easy to scout, I would say. You, you just got to know what you're looking for. You got to know what you want in those positions. Here's Derek Wesley. He's going to be rocking 58 this year. Long sleeves. Uh... He's looking phenomenal. He's gonna. He's definitely going to start. Keenan McIntyre, he's going to start as well. 59 out of Penn State. He's going to look pretty good as well. And the reason why we brought in Khalil Mack, for anybody wondering, is if one of these guys goes down, if one of these guys isn't playing well, we can start him, and he should help fill out just as well. Max Thurman, guard out of Auburn. He's going to be looking pretty good in number 70. Tyler Linton is going to be rocking 11 out of Florida. 94 speed should be very playable in this offense. Uh, I haven't determined exactly who's going to start yet, but he will have a good chance if he does ball out in the preseason and, of course, in training camp. Titus Horton out of North Carolina, 75. He's definitely a guy that can go out and play guard if we need him to. He's probably going to be the backup uh, tackle if we need him to. He can play guard. He can play tackle. Um, Thurman will probably be the backup center behind Dorian Dixon. Manuel Brooks wearing number 50. Which, of course, if you did not know if him wearing 50 means anything, it means that Jack Gammons is more than likely going to get pushed out of the door. Especially with the signing of Terrell Dotson and Keen Evans still playing pretty well and Aziz being under contract. Jack Gammons is out. 78 speed just doesn't play in Madden. I'm sorry. I would love to keep him. But, you know, I got to do what's best for the team at this point. And what's best for the team is moving on, unfortunately. Uh, Tyler Spears, Hassan Haskins, Darrington, Evan at running backs, Taysom Hill will move over that fullback role for now. Um, he's going to be number two until Chig uh, disappoints me. Just going to put that out there. The reason why Hinton is probably going to be number number three is Bo Melton's going to be 26. Max Smith and Franklin Amos, as good as they are currently, they don't have Dev trait. Tutu Atwell, a guy that we brought in, could easily get released as well if we do not need him. The team looks pretty good. The only bad part about this team, and this is the only bad part that I do not like, is the amount of non-dev trait players we have. Uh, Aziz al Shair dropped in dev trait, unfortunately, so he is back down to normal, um, which is understandable. I think he got his star development in year one or early in year two, so it's kind of understandable. You know, if he had a bad, bad second half, he definitely should lose his dev trait. Like I said, Keenan McIntyre, Derek Wesley will be starting. Khalil Mack, Yatir Grossmanos will be backing them up. Joseph Asai and Emmanuel Brooks should be good special teamers as well as good rotational guys if we do need them at any point. The team looks good. Now, there hasn't been a whole ton of just upgrades across the board for the team, but we have recertified that defensive line. We got Reed Blankenship back for a while. Tony Adams, good special teamer. Jason Pinnock, Josh Thompson are still here. You know, we still got a ton of value on the team. 
We did have to get rid of Chase on. Unfortunately, he was the odd man out. And then Darrell Taylor was a guy we signed. So I decided not to get too much back for him. So we did give them both to the Colts. I understand that was an interdivisional trade, but it just makes sense. Isaiah Hodgins, Kendrick Green, Jack Gibbons, and two six go to the Saints for cap guys and then two fifths. So they end up getting quite a big value in, in return for virtually nothing. And then Jameer Saylor, unfortunately, he was the odd man out. I was looking at my offensive line. I had 11 guys that I wanted to keep, and Saylor was the 12th. So he will be getting traded for a 6 and Tyson Bajant, who will go down to our practice squad. If you guys enjoyed this video or any of the videos here on my channel, I would appreciate it if you guys do stick around and subscribe. I'll be back with more videos like this, whether it's roster updates, uh, franchise rebuilds, all that fun stuff, offseason, more stuff to come. I'm hoping to record a lot of Tennessee Titans franchise over this weekend and so on and so forth. But like I said, if you guys enjoyed this video or any of the videos here on my channel, I would appreciate it if you guys do stick around and subscribe, and I'll be back with more videos like this. With that being said, I'm out. Peace.